paranormal. Why is my ear pod working, but yours isn't? They don't want you to hear. As long as yours works. Do you know that? They don't want you to hear. People think it's funny, but dude, something grabbed my ass. Like, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Oh, no, I had to do this. Mark and Debbie, if you're here, this is your chance. I know you love this This was really place. tough. <laughs> this is a damn donkey. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we do investigate strip clubs. Hey, I'm Zach Bagans. Uh, you probably recognize me from a show called Ghost Adventures. And I'm going to be looking back on some of my worst, scariest, funniest, shocking, all kinds of moments from Ghost Adventures. You guys ready? I am. Oh my God, this doesn't feel right. So you're telling me that we captured River Phoenix voice. You can see me standing absolutely still while this doll's hand moves. 15 years of ghost adventures. It's kind of like a celebration, but then again, it's like a shocking kind of thing to know in that I'm still mentally sane. And there's a lot of people out there too that think I'm just like overly dramatic or like, you know, I react too much or I get possessed all the time, but they don't understand that I'm a very sensitive person. I'm very empathic. You know, I just lost my father not too long ago and he started visiting me in my dreams and was telling me things like, told me to tell my stepmom that the uh, spare house key to the house is in the toolbox. I called her and told her that she just started crying uncontrollably. She's like, oh my God, the key is in the toolbox. I was looking for it. That was a visitation. So it's just, you know, people see this as a TV show and everything like this, but this is my life. I don't know what you're gonna throw at me here. So this is gonna be, this is gonna be interesting. No, the island of the dolls. My nightmare, my forever nightmare. No, 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 no. No, you want me to relive this? Thank you. Thank you, E.T. Thank you very much. This place was created as the nightmare for Zach. This place, I can't even describe to you. I didn't know what to expect. Okay, so I had the genius idea of taking one of the most haunted dolls in the world, contacting the owner, seeing what happens when I take this haunted doll and put it at the island of the dolls with all the other haunted dolls to see if they start fighting like a UFC match. So this, we put Harold in this like hut and in this hut, there was a shrine for the guy who died that like created this island because of a little girl that drowned and all these dolls started washing up on shore. He started hanging them all over the place. So his shrine doll is there. There was this massive spider as big as my head that would just sit front and center on the chest of the shrine doll. That was his doll that was with his spirit. So I had the genius idea to take Harold doll, it was a very evil doll, put it next to the shrine doll to see if anything would happen, right? Not knowing that 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 I'm responsible for that, so I'm gonna get I'm gonna get all the wrath of this moment. But it was weird when we put Harold down at that moment. You watch on our thermal camera, all of a sudden heat started picking up on the ground beneath Harold, as if Harold was boiling hot from this. These are all the little moments that go into why is Zach so weird? This is why I'm so weird, because I I do these kinds of moments. I collect all these haunted items over here. I do. I'm surrounded by this. I'm absorbed in it. Clown Motel, why you gotta be showing me clowns? Thank you, you're just uh, reliving all of my nightmares. We went going from dolls to clowns, thank you. The Clown Hotel, I don't know why, I have a, I have a severe fright of dolls and clowns and now I collect them. So we're at the Clown Motel, there's a mannequin of a clown sitting down. Do you see its hand on its, on its lap? Watch the hand, did you see that? Let's hear you laugh. The hand from the mannequin went off of his lap. Okay, if gravity caused that or whatever, I don't care. The timing of this was just insane. And I tried to debunk it. And I was standing absolutely still when the hand went off of the leg. I'll tell you what, if that clown doll would have stood up, I would have like Floyd Mayweather punched the out of it. Because like, I literally thought there was a real person in that thing and there wasn't. It moved its hand in that moment and I was completely still. 
very emotional place, the Washoe Club. Mark and Debbie, if you're here, sorry. This is your chance. I know you love this place. I spent hours, hours in here watching you guys. That's a tough clip. I haven't seen that in a while. This was a place that was that meant a lot to us. It still does. We had a couple very close friends of ours that was on our show for uh, many different times. Mark and Debbie. And everybody in the paranormal community knew who they were. And they, they introduced everybody to EVP, the use of recorders, electronic voice phenomena. Um, they were on our show so many times and Washoe Club was our kind of, our bond. Gettysburg. Oh, I love Gettysburg. You have such a big place in my heart. I gotta get over my, my fear of flying so I could go. Oh my God, no you did. You are not showing this clip, man. I, this clip, people think it's funny, but dude, something grabbed my ass. Like, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. People laugh at this, but I, it was such a hard grab. People were laughing, that was funny, but I was serious as a heart attack. That was like straddling a mannequin that resembled, I think the lady who died there. I know, but it's all, it's all a funny moment, right? Everybody thinks it's a funny moment, but I felt something grab my ass, like very hard, like a whole cheek, and grabbed it and squeezed it. And it was, this is one of the most memorable moments of physical touch from a spirit. This is the Viper Room. Yes, yes. Now I'm pretty sure that she knew him and we didn't know. We were just playing her this voice. Wow. What's wrong? Uh, I'm hearing River Phoenix. And she just freaked out and started telling us that, That's what I heard. that she's recognized this as River's voice. After that, the next voice was like, I'm really confused. And it was the same exact voice. She identified it as River Phoenix. So we go grab clips of River Phoenix's voice. We put them up on some type of a graph that Jay Wosley, who's an expert in audio, and it was an exact match. It was like comparing my thumbprint to my thumbprint. Every line matched on the graph. This place is the mysterious place of all mysterious places. The Winchester Mystery House. We've been there a few times. This is a place that we've gone back to because there's something so mysterious with Sarah Winchester and how she kept building onto this. And I just love it. Oh, this is the mirror. This is the mirror. So this was one of our most iconic captures, visual captures that we've ever captured. And I'm pretty sure that we captured this in regular vision. Like you'll see this as a night vision, but I don't think we captured it in night vision. Yeah, watch, yeah, see, I took the camera off night vision. This is incredible. This was one of the most incredible visual captures we've ever, watched that. Now watch when we slow that down. Watch when we slow that down. That is a hand. That is a clear hand. Do you see that? That is manifested on camera and disappears and is going like this. Look, it's literally going like that, like waving. It looks like a Mickey Mouse hand. Do you see that? It's got its, its thumb up. It's like either giving us thumb up or it's literally waving on us. And this was in, in regular vision. And not only that, but it manifested and disappeared. The Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. People don't know that I like literally let out and hosted this and lead investigated this for seven hours, non-stop, live. So we had these like contestants that we invited. We thought that would be a really good idea to bring them on and to kind of experience what we experience. So I'm going back to check on them at this point. And you gotta remember this is live. So like anything and everything can happen. So I was whispering. She was like, I hear whispering, but it was, it was us. But, but wait a minute. I think this is when we captured this scream. Everybody watching this, turn your volume up because I'm pretty sure this is the moment. Hang on a second. What is that? There it is. There it is. Did you hear that? 
It was a blood-curdling scream. Yorktown Memorial Hospital in Texas. Oh my gosh, is this when, uh... <laughs> this is a damn donkey. I'm looking for, we're looking for the owner and we see this huge dark mass in the distance just coming towards me. And I didn't know what it was. We arrived there and we saw the whole print. We didn't expect a donkey to be charging us like, a, like at the Churchill Downs. This thing was in full sprint. And his name was Spirit, that's right. You know that the, this is the best line right here. Do it, Zach. Do it. Don't ever lunge a donkey's ass. Never lunge a donkey's ass. That became like a, I think people started getting that on t-shirts. Never lunge a donkey's ass. Yeah, black swan in. I'm getting chills watching this again. Her mother died in the house. And so we are trying to make contact with her mother because she's seen her mother. And so we're using a spirit box device, the SB7. And we did three sessions and we had nothing come through. I mean, no, like no radio interference, nothing, not a single blip. Okay. We did three sessions and she, I, I brought her in to be with us, to use her energy. And I said, do you want to try and make contact with your mother? She says, yes. And, um, I go, is there anything that you guys, you know, know, or, or would talk about things like this? This is before we started. And she goes, yeah, we had a code word. So we started doing a session. I started trying to make contact with her mother. And all of a sudden we get this woman's voice come through and say, Bozier. I don't know what the hell that means. What is, what is Bozier? She is just like, wait a minute. Oh my God. She just said Bozier. And I'm like, okay, is that a word in English language I've never heard of before? Should I get a dictionary? And she goes, no, that's our code word. That's our secret code word. And then just like, like chills down my body. And she goes, we were supposed to go to Bozier City, which I guess is a place where they gamble, like casinos or something. And that was their word. Museum of Madness. This was actually at the, my haunted museum. So this is Lady Snake. She's from England. She was a um, kind of a darker witch. And we investigated with her at Hellfire Caves and the Ancient Ram Inn. And she would do rituals for us when we were first starting. The evidence that we would collect while she was doing these was like, we have to have her back. I had the good idea of having a darker witch and a white witch, who's Patty Negri, come into an area where there's a cauldron from Ed Gein that is cursed and where he would literally drain the blood of his victims inside. And Lady Snake was doing a ritual in there. And I was like, hey, this would be a great idea. What if she's doing a ritual in there and I bring her polar opposite into the same room? I didn't want them to fight, but as somebody that likes to create situations that will provide interesting dynamics into various experimentation situations, uh, I thought this was a great idea. And like, she wanted to whack her over the head with a shovel and put her in the damn cauldron. Like I was gonna have to step in before that happened, obviously, and it got real nasty. Albion Castle. It felt like a, he a moth, but with barbs on like the back of it. And I, f that's what it, the sensation is. I had like three layers of clothing on. I felt that go down inside my clothing and I ripped my shirt off in the same moment. And there was, you could see there's marks in the middle of my back right there. Do you see that? And the mark is going through the bloodied part of the dagger of my tattoo. There's a scratch there. And I think there was more down, down, uh, down below as well. Now it's one thing when you get scratches, but it's another thing when you feel the moment of it happening. It scared the shit out of me. The Palomino Club. Yes, we do investigate strip clubs but we don't go there when they're operating we go there when they're when they shut down no no i had to do this we captured a figure literally dancing on stage i just had to mimic what what was being seen i always do that whenever i capture a figure doing something i always have to show the example of what it was doing so yes you get zach you know i did pretty good 
you know, if this, if this, I might maybe take that up as another job opportunity or something. I'm pretty good at that, aren't I? God, look at me shaking my booty. Not bad. A lot of laughs, but also a lot of horrors. The uh, comedy store where I was roasted by Jeff Ross. We've been trying to investigate this for you. Oh, jeez. Jeff Ross! I was terrified of this guy. I mean, I've seen him roast all these celebrities and like, when you see him roast these celebrities, you're literally like, oh my God, this is the most like craziest guy in the world. He went from roasting me and laughs to all of a sudden talking about Brody Stevens, his friend. As soon as he said Brody Stevens' name, the whole lights to the entire stage, they went off and started flickering. And so immediately we got up, we spoke to whoever was working there, the manager, because it was closed. We asked, was anybody in the booth? Did anybody manipulate that? Nobody was even up there where those are controlled. And after that moment, Jeff went from roasting the hell out of Zach, making fun of his sweatshirt and making fun of my white mask and all this kind of stuff, to all of a sudden his face went white as a ghost and was like, wait a minute, shut the f up. Are you guys doing that? Probably one of the most iconic locations we've ever investigated, the Cecil Hotel. Now, I'm in the elevator right now. I am playing the elevator game, which I think originated in South Korea. It's kind of like this, it's like a game. It's kind of like an urban game, you know, like a, a Bloody Mary. It's kind of like that, where you push a different sequence of elevator buttons. You go to five, you go to two, you let the door open, blah, blah, blah. And it's supposed to, when the door opens on this particular floor, you're supposed to feel something enter into with you. I think a woman. And there was a moment, like, I'm not reacting out of nothing, everybody. I felt an ice cold mass of air with like this energy enter into the elevator with me. And I was wondering, Elisa Lamb, they found her body in the water tank on the roof. They don't know how she died. They don't even know how the hell she got in the water tank and how she was acting in the elevator with those weird moments, like get moving away from somebody. I was like, hey, as an investigator, I'm willing to try anything. Was she, did she know about the elevator game? Was she playing it? And did she, you know, summons a spirit to do something to her? Because a lot of the belief is that a spirit was after her. So I decided to play the elevator game at the Cecil Hotel, which is one of the most haunted hotels in the world, to see what would happen. And I felt something enter the elevator in with me. A place that scarred me forever. Um, the Devil's Den. You're picking the good ones here. This is a location that scarred me. Now we're talking to a former inmate here. And we, we went here because it's abandoned at the, at the moment. And former guards were telling us that inmates would experience things entering into their cells and making them go crazy. Dark shadow figures. And he was a former inmate. And we didn't really understand or comprehend the impact. At first I was like, you know, is, is he crying because of what he went through here? It's not fun being in jail, it's traumatic. But then, all of this went to the, the bad spirits, the bad ghosts that would enter into his, into his cell. And then I realized that this was just a regular GA episode. I realized after this, we have to make this into a two hour special. And what I experienced at this place, it made me question whether or not, I'll, I'll be honest, it made me question whether or not that I wanted to continue investigating. And that's something that takes a lot for something like that to affect me at that level, for me to even bring that as a thought. The Stow House. This is the Stow House. Yes, great episode coming up. This is the part where I get really excited, as you can see, because these devices are just audio recorders. You hit a record button, it captures just regular audio. So we're two rooms away at this point. We've now hurry. In this family, these spirits of this family, they don't like people in their house. And we were getting evidence that they didn't like people in their house. But leave now, hurry. Like th these are direct, 
demands by these human spirits for us to get out of their house. And this particular investigation, we captured so much compelling evidence, both visually and audibly. This was an, a very iconic investigation. It never, ever gets old. Not after 15 years. I might be investigating with, you know, with a cane um, and, and hearing aids, you know what I mean? But I just, I, I, I just can't ever stop doing this. I just love it. And I wanna thank my brothers, Aaron, Billy, and Jay. Uh, we've been through everything together. And in a community to, um, a lot of craziness in this community, and to be able to stick by and to have these guys by my side and, and I'm by their side, and we've been through literal spiritual war together. Um, but I wouldn't wanna do this with anybody else. And so I just wanted to thank uh, you guys for doing this for so long with me as well. And, you know, we love doing it. I love our fans and yeah, we'll see how long we keep doing this before we turn into what we're hunting. And when I turn into that, there's some people I'm gonna haunt the hell out of. You guys got me to tear up. You got me to laugh. Um, you got me to get very serious and intense. Thank you for you know giving me this opportunity. I think it's an important thing to do. I've never done this. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed it. Continue watching us. 